or they could have course corrected and started, oh, this is a shocker, producing quality shows. <laughs> Good afternoon viewers and welcome to another video today and of course it's Friday the end of the working week so if you're working and you're winding up after four o'clock today have yourself a good weekend. So this article now this story dropped last night but I thought I'd talk about it today and I've also attached another article to talk about quickly because it's like the yin and yang of the whole what's going on at the moment in entertainment. So bounding into comics, after embracing wokeness and seeing their ratings plummet across nearly all of their shows, the CW is for sale. The CW is a network I used to like a lot, but obviously since this article's kind of dropped the ball now on what's been going on, you kind of have to see the wood for the trees. So after reading that part there, now of course warning here, you're gonna be seeing some cringe images coming up from the CW shows. I'm sure there, there are some CW stands out there who will still stick by all of this garbage, but it, it's terrible. Batwoman, who cares? The Batwoman I like is from the comics and also I like Batgirl from the animated series of Batman in, in the 90s and in the noughties with the Batman, I thought. I, I loved that character there. She wasn't insufferable. So it was first reported by the Wall Street Journal that both Viacom, CBS, and Warner Media were exploring the option of selling the network. Joe Flint detailed AT&T's Warner Media and Viacom CBS Incorporated are exploring a possible sale of a, of a significant stake or all of the CW network, which they jointly own, according to people familiar with the matter. Ay ay ay. And then we've got Iris West from The Flash. I mean, that's a Power Rangers costume, isn't it? Good grief. I mean, whew. the report was full. No, sorry, the report was all but confirmed by CW boss Mark Pedowitz. In a memo he sent to CW employees that was obtained by The Hollywood Reporter. In other words, it was leaked to The, to the Hollywood Reporter. In the memo, Pedowitz wrote, I'm sure you've seen the recent speculation in the press around the CW, so I wanted to take the opportunity to address this with you directly and share with you what we know. He then stated, and first, as many of you are aware, over the past year or so, this transformative time in our industry has led to a series of business activity across media and content companies. Given the environment right now, Viacom and Warner Brothers are exploring strategic opportunities to optimize the value of their joint venture in the CW network. It's too early to speculate what might happen, but we promise to keep you updated as we learn more. And of course, wow, this is just, I don't want to see that. Yeah, Walker Texas Ranger. Now this is, you know, it's funny how they don't use the phrase Texas Ranger at the end because obviously that show was synonymous with Chuck Norris, the, the great Chuck himself, but we've got a very emaciated Jared Padalecki who came off his run from uh, Supernatural and is now the headline role in this series, which did well in his first season, but it's kind of seen declining figures in its second. He looks awful, actually. Don't know what's happened to him and Jensen Ackles on Supernatural. So look, here's the uh, latest ratings averages as viewed by the age demographic and the uh, viewership. So Walker, which I mentioned, so this is 2021 to now. So 0. 12 percent like wow yikes and that's between that's for the 18 or 49 year olds um and then you got the flash in second place the flash is awful like the first two seasons of that show were really good then it just went into doing retelling silly storylines and it just got very very cringe after that so i just gave up on it all american don't know what it is dc's legend on tomorrow i do know what that is that's 0.20 uh, Bat Whammon, 0.8. The 4400, that is still going? I wasn't even aware of that. Uh, Legacies, have no idea. Dynasty, yep. Nancy Drew, whatever. Riverdale, which used to be like a flagship show for the CW. And that's pretty much, it's pretty awful, actually, I've got to say. And there's a little sub headline here. Chloe Bennett, you know her from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. She exited the CW live action version of Powerpuff Girls. That'll probably tell you something. And then, yeah, we had all these renewed shows for the CW, but I don't see why they're doing that now because nobody really cares. It's, uh, it's yeah, it, back in the day when they were 
still kind of riding on the crest of a wave, but I tell you what, Supergirl, now I like Melissa Benoist, I thought she was like the perfect Supergirl. Well, it became full on woke, didn't it? Every single episode, it was a statement about this and a statement about that. It's like, I just wanna watch a superhero show. Arrow didn't have any of that in it and it was still a, quite a good show, even up to the very end when it was like, oh my God, what are we doing here, guys? The, the Arrow for me had some laugh out loud moments, but I did like Mad Dog. I thought he was a great character. Now. Haven't explained that to you. Okay, here we go. Uh, I just want to read out this comment here from Krong Rex. For years, most of our community have been scratching our heads. As we knew, they must have been losing money. As we know, the rules go woke, go broke. They don't even have a hit show to entice anyone for a sale. So any company who wants to buy it would just be wanting a channel for broadcasting purposes is that what he's going to say and since broadcasting is getting demolished by streaming this will be a hard sell cw must be very desperate to sell and will likely take a huge loss to underburden themselves of this broke channel <laughs> and as elric 66 says or they could of course corrected and started oh this is a shocker producing quality shows Okay, by contrast, folks, here on the Mail Online. Now, the Daily Mail is a publication. I don't really see eye to eye on what they say about certain things. If it's a video game inciting violence, they're going to be the first to jump on there and kind of support that narrative, which is dumb. But in relation to the CW, Kevin Costner has this TV show called Yellowstone. My friend in North Carolina who watches this show religiously has told me repeatedly to watch this. So at at some point, I'm going to do that. I will, after reading this now, I've got to make the effort to sit down and watch it. So Yellowstone broke the records for the most watched cable TV show in the last five years on Sunday with more than 11 million viewers tuning in, which is insane. Uh, the Walking Dead's, The Walking Dead. <laughs> the Walking, yeah, if you're broke, it is going to be The Walking Dead. I guess CW will know about that now, won't they? So <laughs> The Walking Dead set the record in 2017 of October with 11.4 million viewers viewers watching the season eight premiere of course if we saw how seven, season seven ended you kind of realize why that curiosity came back in because season seven was just awful it really was with negan killing off key characters kevin costner's series about rural america surpassed its own season three finale a live viewership by which was 5.2 million by 81 percent which is insane and they're calling yellowstone like the water the new water cooler show uh, so if you don't know the expression it basically means when you want to break and you're talking to your colleagues about their favorite tv show um that's pretty much what comes up i'm actually surprised that this has been described as a non-woke paramount tv series because paramount are promoting the new halo show and if you saw my reaction to that trailer god that was awful it's like the first 48 seconds of that show that trailer was just like female characters fawning and just looking distressed and insufferable yeah who cares i was just so annoyed by that it's just like unsc troopers just suffering like i don't care so the non-woke paramount series which first aired in 2018 has been besting cable TV mainstays with over 7 million viewers on the week of December the 6th. It was only surpassed by the 13 million that attracted to the New England Patriots versus Buffalo Bills football game, outpacing the Fox Channel's The Five. Special report with Brett Bayer and Tucker Carlson tonight. So that's kind of really, really cool. Now, I know some people have jokingly said, well, they're pretty much sure that the major, the, the vast majority of the show's salary goes towards Kevin Costner. I mean, I'm a big Costner fan anyway, but I'm pretty sure that that is not the case. But there's a really great cast in this series, like Kelly Riley, one of my favorite Brit actresses, and now she's on this show. Good for her for being in something like this. I guess all the collective cast of people who are in this show. And yes, there is a thing that is mostly about uh, white people that it talks about, but there is a diverse cast in the show too. You've got your Native Americans, you've got your African Black Americans in there as well. So it does balance it up, but I get where they're coming from and that doesn't bother me at all. If, you know, if, you, if you're a fan of my channel already, you know where I stand on this anyway. So I'm really glad to see this and I'm, oh look, so here we go. That's the rising Yellowstone viewership. So season three, 5.2 million. And then in season four, 
it shot up by 81%. That is absolutely insane. So I'm really glad to hear that as well. In fact, Taylor Sheridan, now he's the person who created Yellowstone. You know him as Deputy Sheriff Wayne Unser in Sons of Anarchy, but then he got fed up with the whole acting gig and decided to become a, uh, I think he's an award-winning screenwriter. He wrote Sicario 1 and 2, and obviously he's behind Yellowstone now. So the guy's got some credentials, man. He's got some street cred, so I'm kind of glad to see that. So, yeah, I guess in light of what CW is going through at the moment, they embraced the, they embraced the wokeness. Now they're, they're going broke. <laughs> and they're going to be picked up by somebody. You know what they should do with CW? Sell it for a dollar online and see what happens. I think that'll be hilarious. But, you know, congratulations to Kevin Costner. Obviously, he's from that generation that I'm from where, you know, look... If you want to bring in the gender and politics, make your own separate TV show about it. Don't bring it into mainstream entertainment, especially your beloved IPs. You don't have to, and now to echo the sentiment of another fellow YouTuber, you don't have to insert everything into everything. You can just give us good old fashioned entertainment. I don't fucking understand it, okay? Some things just need to be left the fuck alone. That's why it's called tradition. Wow. So, did you enjoy this video today, folks? I had a ball making this one. I thought it was really, really interesting. And articles like this, even though I'm not a big fan of the proponent or behind the article, but again, if it makes me aware that it's something I need to watch, I will do. I know some people are saying that this has overtaken succession uh, with Brian Cox, and it's like, it's, uh, it's the argument about left versus right. For me, politics doesn't come into entertainment. It's just enjoying entertainment. We can do that, can't we? Or am I just completely, am I completely off the mark on that one? Well, if I am off the mark, let me know in the comments below. Smash that subscribe button right in the Gingangoolies. And I will see you on my next video. Oh, no touching without consent.